Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode of Rio's How To. This one is all about your forward loop and it's called How To Perfect Your Forward Cast. And what we're going to look at here is a Rio Gold fly line. This is our best all round general purpose fly line that we make. And this is a bright orange one because when you're looking at loop problems, hey, you've got to be able to see your loop. So that's what the gear is today. And I've got a nine foot five weight rod here to put it on that's white. And again, just easy for you to see what we're doing. To do this, first of all, we're going to take a look at what a loop is, what a good loop is and a bad loop is. So come on, join me down on the water and see what a loop is all about. Okay. Let's come into this little bit of slow water down here and show you exactly what a loop is. A loop is the shape the fly line takes when you make a casting stroke, a back casting stroke or a forward stroke, you get this thing called a loop. And basically it is the shape of the fly line where there's a top and a bottom and it creates this long U shape. That is what a loop is. Most of the time when you're casting, you're striving to create a narrow gap between the two legs of a loop like that. That's a tight loop. And most of the time that's a good thing to have. And generally speaking, you have a loop that is very wide gap between the top and the bottom. And usually that is a bad loop. As you get into casting, you'll find there are times to create a, a big loop, but most of the time that's a bad thing. So that's what loops are. That's the difference between two loops. We're going to go out into the middle of the water now and show you a couple of things about how to create a loop and how to recognize when things go wrong on your forward cast. Okay. So let's take a look at those two loops in actual reality. This is a narrow loop, a good loop. Narrow top and bottom quite close together. Here it is again. That's a narrow loop and a wide loop looks a lot worse like that. Very bad. Lots of gap between the top and the bottom of the loop always falls in a messy heap of knitting, which is what you don't want. And the loop size is generally controlled by the rod arc and the fact that the rod should travel in a straight line path, the tip ring of the rod. So even when your rod rotates, the rotation should still travel in a straight line. The more the rod arcs, the more rotational curves there are in your casting stroke, the wider the loop becomes. Let's have a look at that in the actual casting stroke. Watch my arm and my rod and see that. Here's a straight path of the rod. The rod tip hardly goes up or down, goes straight back and forth with a little rotation. Here's a bad one. Lots of arcing. So a lot of people when they're learning casting use a lot of wrist and that's the problem with this. But generally a big loop is caused by these wider arcs and a narrow loop is caused by tighter arcs and straighter rod tip paths. So those are your general loop identifications, but there's also things that can go wrong in your loops. And there's three distinct problems that I'd like to talk about here and how to recognize the problems by just looking at that forward cast. The first problem is where your loop climbs on the forward stroke and drops and falls in a big mess in front of you. I call it a fluttering leader, but you can see whatever it is. It's where your loop climbs and drops, drops back. And that is caused invariably by starting a forward stroke with too much power. When you make a backstroke, your rod stops, stops. From there, it has to go forward and accelerate. If you start slow and finish fast, that's a beautiful casting stroke. If you start fast, well, you've lost it. This is a fast forward stroke start. And you can see what happens to the loop. Now a good forward stroke start. Look how slow it is. And then finish with speed. Start slow, finish fast. Another problem you get in casting is kind of the opposite. Instead of the loop climbing, it's the loop falling, collapsing down in front of you. And this is caused by what's called creep. Creep is a nemesis. Oh gosh, people don't even know they've got creep. And you tell them and they say, yeah, I know. And they don't know. And they still creep. So what is creep? Well, a rod, when you make a good casting stroke, should stop and be motionless for a period of time. And then it should start slow and finish quickly. Creep is where the rod doesn't stop. Or if it stops, it kind of edges forward like this. Well, see that lateral move? That's creep. Let's show you with a fly rod what creep looks like. Here's a bad one. See how my rod crept forward and then our power stroke started right about here. That's terrible. Let's show you the creep. I'll exaggerate it. Nobody's really this bad, but I'll exaggerate it. Rod back, there's the creep. Now I do my forward stroke. Okay, let's do that one more exaggerated one. Here's the creep. Now I do my forward stroke. Reality is like this. Most people creep a lot less than that, but it looks like this. And you can see the angle of the loop nose diving down into the water. 
That's a sure sign that you've lost your forward stroke. The rod should be motionless between your back cast and your forward cast. Right there, dang, and then go. Dead still, no creep, and then go. And the third and final problem we're gonna look at, and perhaps the most common and most infuriating one of them all, it causes these things called wind knots. Everyone's familiar with wind knots. Wind knots is caused generally, not by the wind, by what's called a tailing loop. Let's show you the tailing loop. So here is a tailing loop on the forward cast with the line twists and tangles into itself. Terrible affliction, drives you crazy because you get wind knots and people get broken off all the time. Let's show you that wind knot tailing loop thing again. There it is, you can literally see the knot being tied in it. It's caused by a number of issues, but the commonest one I see when I'm teaching is aggression. A, 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 not a smooth acceleration, but a, a jump of power, a jump of, I don't know, acceleration, a jump of power, punch, whatever you like to call it. So again, here's the good one. Watch how smooth my acceleration is forward. Start slow, finish fast, nice and smooth. Now here's a tailing loop coming in. Again, watch what my hand does. Snatches in it. It's an aggressive stroke. There's nothing fluid about it. And you'll always get this line crashing into itself, what's called a tail, and you always get these wind knots. So as you can see, watching a forward loop is the eyes and the window to identifying a lot of casting mistakes. You can watch your buddy across the river, across the lake, and say, hey, mate, you've got a creep on there, because you can identify that by what the forward cast is doing. And of course, you can watch your own loops, video yourself, or just watch your own loops, and see what your forward cast is doing and how the movement here affects that. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode of How To, which was how to perfect the forward cast. If you did, check out the Rio website, look at Rio TV on the website, and you'll find there's a whole bunch of how-to videos on there. Thank you ever so much for watching. Now get out on the water and perfect those forward casts.